G'day and welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. Bevo here today joined by Australian marathon runner Jess Trengove. Jess won a bronze medal at the 2018 Commonwealth Games over there in Gold Coast and the same in Glasgow back in 2014. She's also completed for Australia in the London Olympics and Rio. She's doing a great job for someone that's not even 30 yet. Jess, it's great to have you on Chewing the Fat today. That was very generous of you, but I'm a touch over 30, so. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. I oh. love that. <laughs> oh, you didn't, you don't look anything over 30, so you passed a 24 year old, I reckon. So. <laughs> so, talk to us about your journey. So, it started off obviously, you're born in Narracourt, grew up there, and then how did it all happen? How did you become an Australian marathon runner? To be honest, I didn't see myself running marathons um, as a youngster. We were fortunate as a family to head to the Sydney 2000 Olympics to watch. We saw athletics, swimming, basketball and tennis. And I remember watching the 5,000 metres there and thinking that's insane running 12 and a half laps. I certainly didn't think I'd be running 42.195 one day. But I guess um, as a primary school student, I seemed to... Um, have more success over the longer distances. So we had cross country every year through a, a pretty sandy um, dirt pine forest. And I kind of, yeah, would naturally sort of be closer to the front, whereas in the sprints, I'd be way out the back. So I was always um, more suited to the endurance events. And as a netballer, I loved my netball growing up and it was huge in the Southeast. Um, I always played sort of the, through the center court and loved just running around. So when I got to the age of 21 and I was choosing whether I'd focus on netball or um, athletics, I decided um, I could see some more potential with running. And um, my coach at the time, Adam Didick, said, I think you're going to be a marathoner one day and I thought well at least I have full control over running there are specific times you have to hit to sort of make teams and you know I can train on my terms and um, sort of fit it into my day as opposed to team sports where it's quite rigid and uh, so that's the the path I chose and I ended up yeah, being really happy with it as much as I do miss the netball I know I can play that again one day. <laughs> You've actually led me to my next question because we see quite a few people these days going from other sports into AFL and AFLW could we see you taking the path from marathon running to AFLW one day? I think I've maybe missed the boat there but by the time I'd be looking to wind down in running, I think, yeah, the standard would be extremely high. It's already from year to year, just um, the depth and the quality of everyone's skills is is improving uh, radically. So, you know, maybe a few years ago, I would have um, thought it sounded like a good idea, but I know I'd, uh, I'd need a lot of, um, I guess, specific training and changing direction and whatnot, because my agility right now is average. And I'm so used to running in straight lines that I'd be sure to probably do an ACL or something I'd regret. So, <laughs> Well, you never know, because I interviewed Jess Foley uh, recently, and she went from playing basketball as a, you know, a superstar Australian basketballer to playing AFLW this year and absolutely killing it for the Crows. So, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, certainly we, I kicked the footy a lot growing up with my brother Jack and, um, yeah, I do enjoy it, but <laughs> I've still got some uh, big goals in running, so. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, let's get back to your running. So one thing I really would like to know myself, a lot of people probably want to know as well, what sort of training and what sort of diet do you have to have to be a marathon runner, especially competing for Australia? Well, I, I ran my first marathon um, in March of 2012. So um, my coach and I sort of saw this opportunity to try and run an Olympic qualifier. I'd run a few half marathons and thought, um, yeah, let's see how we go. So my training changed, I guess, over the period of 12 months from being perhaps... I mean, one ten kilometres a week to gradually, you know, 150 kilometres a week. And I, I ran that first marathon and I guess was over the moon to get the um, Olympic qualifying time of sub 2.32 um, for the London Olympics. And I've, I've now run 12 marathons and my mileage gets up to about or maxes out at 200 kilometres per week. But that's a rare week. It might be like 175, 180 for the 12 to 16 weeks leading up to the marathon so that's generally split into two runs per day um, it might be a uh, on a Sunday morning it's you know two and a half hours um, in the morning uh, on Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays I tend to have like a rep session or fart leg session and then a jog at the other end of the day and uh, my diet really is about giving myself good energy before a run so um, I guess a boost of carbohydrates it might be you know, toast with honey or some sort of banana and some muesli or muesli bar and then immediately after training trying to get some good quality protein and carbohydrates in to kickstart the recovery process. So I eat a lot but my meals are really focused around those training sessions. 
Oh, you're doing an amazing job. And uh, <laughs> one thing I've got to ask as well is, um, and congratulations on this. Obviously, you just got married recently and, and you're pregnant, which is amazing news. But um, Tokyo Olympics is happening next year. Uh, what's the plans? Are you going to try and chase that dream of uh, competing in Tokyo? Well, I feel like I'm still preparing for a marathon right now because I've still got an appetite without nearly as much um, training and I'm sort of preparing for impending pain, I guess, in November. But um, it's I've got to be really open-minded because you just don't know how you'll go in pregnancy. Every person's different. So pregnancy, childbirth, recovery, and then I'll, you know, chat to my coach, Adam, and sort of see where we're at, try to reintroduce training and look if I could qualify for Tokyo that would be unbelievable but I don't want to put too much pressure on it because my priority will be looking after the baby and um, I guess looking after my body as well so that I can you know achieve my running goals down the track because I think rushing into it could be detrimental. <laughs> yeah so you're only young so you've still got plenty of time and hopefully it's a baby that likes to sleep anyway so you can get plenty yeah, of sleep yeah, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, you, uh, we spoke about this off air. You do a little thing called uh, Rundy's Undies. Would I pronounce, pronounce that correctly? Yeah. yeah, awesome. Yep. So it's a uh, sports underwear apparel company that you run with your husband and Jack, your brother. Tell us more about that. Yeah, well, I um, spent a year in Melbourne in 2015 and um, I guess the, the couple I was staying with were very entrepreneurial and um, I'd been expressing my frustration to my husband, my now husband Dylan and, and Jack about, um, I had my favourite running undies and I couldn't find them anywhere. I wanted to re purchase some and couldn't get them and then Jack was sort of saying that he wears speedos for footy matches and we saw this potential I guess um, gap in the market for sports specific underwear and just started brainstorming ideas and our, um, the, the couple I was living with said well you better trademark that name Rundy's which we'd come up with and so we did and then got inspired and decided to start getting uh, sports undies manuf manufactured specifically I guess to cater for the needs of runners and I had my specifics that I wanted and then Jack had a few for footy and and so we started from there and now we've um, kind of broadened our range and we just love the opportunity it's given us to get out there in the community and and meet other runners at events when we set up stalls and we've been able to support a couple of runners um, with I guess their flights to get to races and our goal with the company is to be able to to give back and to help potentially sponsor and support some athletes who don't get funding elsewhere because we recognise that's been a challenge in our careers um, you know when you haven't quite made an Australian team yet and you need that support to get there so that's kind of the purpose of the the business it's just a side project for us all and yeah <laughs> amazing we'll keep up the good work of that one hopefully that continues to go well and let's talk about Jack because um, I'm a Port Power supporter I presume you are now I'm with Jack playing for the power uh, and he's having a terrific season in the sample I reckon he's very stiff uh, not to get a game for Port um, how's he going though how's he coping knowing that you know he's playing so well but he can't quite crack it into the team yeah look he's um I guess first and foremost really happy that his um, body's healthy because he had those years in 2012 to 2015 through 16 even where you know he just he couldn't even run he he like I love he he loves running as well. I mean, we did a lot of cross country together growing up. And so that was really frustrating for him having to spend all that time cross training in the gym. So he's stoked to be back out running and I'd say in the best shape fitness wise that he's ever been in. And um, he's really enjoying his footy. Yes, he'd love to be making the port side, but at least he's having fun in the SANFL and really happy with his game. So uh, that's a positive to take from it. And we've been to almost every SANFL game and love watching him so <laughs> yeah fingers crossed let's hope he gets the game soon or at least wins a McGarry anyway if he doesn't play for the port and finally you're going to be an ambassador at the Gold Coast Marathon in a couple months time tell us more about that Jess well um after the Commonwealth Games last year on the Gold Coast um I just had this desire to see what time I could run I'd had probably my best preparation ever leading into a marathon for that Commonwealth Games day and I guess the conditions and the, the nature of the race meant that it was really um, tough to run a fast time. I felt like that was the hardest marathon I've ever done so I um, it went on to run the Gold Coast Marathon in July of that year and um, did get a PB at the time um, and was really happy I guess. I love the event and it's always 
been one that's been special to me because I ran my first ever half marathon there and I've sort of gone back to the Gold Coast each year and I've been involved in some way. So uh, this year I'll be going there as an ambassador uh, given that I <laughs> won't be able to race and I'm really looking forward to that. Hope to provide some special comments to the commentary team because I certainly remember most you know, <laughs> steps of the way from last year and yeah. <laughs> oh, terrific. Well, all the very best for that. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today on Chewing the Fat. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And I really wish you all the best with the pregnancy. And I uh, hope we'll see you competing for Australia again, whether it be in Tokyo or going forward. Thanks so much, Bevan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. See you next time, guys. Thanks to Justin for filming again. Cheers.